Hi, it's Susan here and welcome to In The Craft Room. Today I'm going to start the character square of Jemima Puddle Duck from issue number three. And just like we did with our first character square, the Peter Rabbit square, we're going to be tracing the template in the back onto the Bonder web. So we're going to be using the Bonder web that was left over from the Peter Rabbit character square from issue number one. You may remember me saying when I was unpacking in episode number one, hmm, I wonder if I'll use this. I wonder if I'll need this. Well, that was the Bonder web. And how do you use it? Well, I didn't know how to use it. There is a paper side and there is a webbing side. Bonder web is a bit like a double-sided tape for fabric, which you apply with a dry iron. So we draw on the paper side, we cut it out, and then we iron the webbing side onto our applique fabrics. We then cut out the applique fabrics and then iron that once we've removed the paper backing onto our final square. So that's how the Bonder web works. So our first job is to trace each piece of the applique onto the Bonder web. We're going to have to make sure that we've got enough bonder web and I need to be quite economical with tracing the pieces. And I'm going to place them as closely together as possible. I don't want to run out of bonder web. Because I'm using up all of the blank spaces of the Bonder web and trying to conserve my um, piece as much as possible, I'm numbering the outlines straight away. Um, I'm tracing them not in order so that I know which piece is which. So my nine pieces of Jemima Puddle Duck have been traced out. My next step is to cut them. I really have to be careful because the fusible backing, which is this webbing, is um, lifting away and I need to make sure that I cut them out together. So these are the applique fabrics that came with issue number three. I'm going to be using the Dresden Blue and the Candy Blue from Peter Rabbit from issue one, which are my leftovers. Always keep your leftovers in case you'll need them for further character squares. So the Bonder web pieces are laid out on the colors and I'm about to press them. Yeah. And because the webbing from the back when I was cutting moved away from the paper side, I'm hoping that it will iron on together.
so here we have our Jemima Puddle Duck applique pieces. I'm going to cut them out now. As you can see, I've tried to be quite economical with the ironing placement of my outlined piece. I didn't um, iron it smack bang in the middle because I want to keep these fabrics for future projects. So this is the fabric that came with issue number three. I find that it's a bit pale and a bit insipid to what I'd like my quilt to be. I've chosen this um, pale blue fabric for Jemima Puddle Duck. Last time when we made the Peter Rabbit square, I had so much trouble with the tracing paper transfer method onto my fabric so this time I'm going to use a light box. I've got the template of the applique which I'm going to place onto the light box. The light is going to shine onto my fabric and I'm going to trace it directly onto my fabric. I'm not going to trace the flowers, I'm going to use other motives but I am going to trace Jemima Puddle Duck. And that took one tenth of the time. Now that I've got Jemima's outline on my final fabric square, I'm going to place her individual applique pieces in the right spot and then press them into position. But don't forget to remove the backing of the bonder web before you iron it on. So here we have Jemima Puddle Duck. She's ready to be stitched around her outline. I'm then going to iron on some motives this time instead of stitching. And I will then be putting my border ribbon around her. But that's all I'm doing today. See you next time in the craft room. Bye.